Church of Mary. God gave us the best. So will you receive at this time with the word of the Lord, the Honorable Bishop Lambert Gates, who's over the Kingdom Apostolic Ministries, uh, and also he is the presiding prelate of the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith. Great history, great DNAs, can preach, will preach, and he's here to preach. Anybody need a word? God bless you, Honorable Bishop. Thank you, Bishop Nelson. I'm going to ask us if we will just bow our heads where we are. Father, we thank you today again for your mercy and for your grace. We're so thankful that you have allowed us to come together, firstly to glorify you, and then to celebrate, Lord, what you have done. Lord, we agree with the psalmist and attest to the fact that you have done great things, whereof we're glad. We thank you for Greater Christ Temple Church, and we thank you, Lord, for a century of continued service. So many ministries, Lord, have opened their doors and closed their doors. But this ministry, having obtained help of you, they continue into this day. And so, Lord, thank you for every one of the hundred years. Thank you, Lord, for the leadership, the legacy that you've given this church. From the founding pastor to the second pastor, and now, Lord, to this great shepherd that we celebrate today. Thank you for 40 years that you have allowed him to oversee this flock, for the anointing that rests upon his life, and then that flows from him into this congregation. Thank you for his dear wife. We celebrate you today, Lord. We magnify you today, Lord. and We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Now we thank you for this service and pray that you've been pleased with everything that has transpired and we ask you to send now that anointing that makes preaching easy break every yoke break every fetter send us away better than when we came get to glory lord get to glory lord get to glory lord and we thank you right now in that mighty name of jesus and everybody said amen, amen. and amen now, before you sit down, I, I want you to praise God, if you don't mind, with me, like you're grateful for 100 years. Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise Him for real. 100 years. 100 years. And we're so grateful. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I hope you know that 100 years is is not something to be taken lightly. Amen. It is uh, most remarkable and, and just such a tremendous blessing that God has favored and accorded this great church on today. I'm certainly honored to be here today and just delighted to uh, be in the presence of greatness. And I, when I say that, I firstly speak of your esteemed shepherd, pastor of this great flock who has overseen this ministry for better than four decades and uh, I do agree with my pastor and part of what he said that is uh, Bishop Sherman Lee Merritt Sr. is one of the most dynamic preachers and vessels of God on the planet earth somebody else come on Somebody ought to thank God for this wonderful pastor and wonderful preacher. He is uh, my big, big brother, and I celebrate him, uh, and I love him more than he knows. Just appreciate him and all the accolades that were given to him. Every one of them was true. Amen. And he's so deserving of that and so much more. You know, for a man to preach like he preaches, and then to be as humble as he is humble. That's a miracle all by itself. Amen. But uh, God knew who he was choosing when he chose uh, this vessel, not only to be 
over this church, but to be over this diocese and to be a bishop uh, in the Lord's church. He celebrated not just the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world, but certainly in the PCFI and, and everybody that can get a hold of him. Amen. He uh, is a blessing. And so Christ's temple should feel loved if for no other reason. You should feel loved because God gave you Bishop Mary. Come on. All by, all of that by itself. And so I'm honored to be here with him. Uh, and then not only do I love him, I love his dear wife, Lady Vera Merritt. She is just a phenomenal vessel of the Lord. And I'm saying all this, I know protocol has been set, but nobody can say this for me. Amen. I, I respect her as a woman of God. She knows how to compliment him. Matter of fact, she balances him out. Amen. Makes him uh, look better. But, uh, we <laughs> but, but we just appreciate her for her loving spirit, her kindness, and that's all I've ever known of her is kindness and graciousness. And I know that this church again knows that she has been a blessing to this flock. And your journey, your journey with Bishop Merritt would not have been what it was without for this uh, gracious woman of God who flanks his side. And we certainly again want to salute all the children today. Come on, let's, let's thank God for every son and daughter of Bishop Merritt. They are to be celebrated as it has already been said. They have gone along on the ride. And uh, they have been a blessing to this uh, ministry in Jesus' name. Now, I thank God for my pastor who is here, my father, uh, the Honorable Bishop James David Nelson Sr., who is uh, just in a class all by himself. And uh, I appreciate him. Amen. I love him from the bottom of my heart. I haven't seen him in... in in the flesh in two years. This is the first time I've laid physical eyes on him. And uh, I just appreciate him for what God has done through him in my life. I believe every pastor needs a pastor. Amen. I think there's something wrong if you're out here pastoring and you don't have somebody that you call pastor. And uh, I appreciate him. He's a, he uh, is a pastor indeed. He sets me in order, tells me to shut up. Be quiet. And you know, uh, I don't know about some of y'all, when you're calling, when you talk to him on the phone, you ever notice he never says goodbye? He talks to you and, and uh, you, you know, you think he's there, he goes, cluck. <laughs> Nobody like him. Amen. But we appreciate him and uh, for, his de <laughs> for his deposit. Uh, in my life and uh, you all forgive me I'm just excited I've been locked up so <laughs> just happy to see people amen but uh, I can't thank God for him without thanking God for my mom mother Bessie Nelson overseer Nelson just a radiant encouraging person and uh, time won't permit for me to express my love and my gratitude for her but I'm so glad to see you today and then I'm happy because uh, my cousin is here Bishop James David Nelson Jr. He is so masterfully steered this service and uh, we thank God for him I was looking at him he's so clean today y'all y'all see that suit that's a special suit he got on y'all amen then he got that big old bishop's ring but it's so big it almost can't fit on his finger but <laughs> I have fun. We have fun together, but I, I certainly esteem him. Thank God for what the Lord is doing in his life. To all of these men of God who, grace, uh, who are present in the pulpit on today, certainly salute every one of you in your respective places. I won't call every name. Suffolk and Bishop Smith and I, we have a special connection. And uh, uh, certainly to your council chairman, Suffolk and Bishop uh, Blissett, and to all of the saints of God, we celebrate you in that wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to be here long today. I'm going to 
be very brief in my uh, ministry on this afternoon. It's, I know it's about 7.15 and we were in morning service in Detroit, caught a flight to come down here. And as I said, I'm just kind of getting out. You know, I took COVID real serious where I came from. And so uh, I was a germaphobe before COVID. Touch not, taste not, all right. Misusing the scripture, but I was a germaphobe before COVID and so I've been in a bubble for a long time and now I got to uh, relax. I'm, I got my own microphone. Don't nobody touch my mic, don't nobody talk in my mic, but today I'm in a mic about a hundred folk done spoke in. <laughs> I'm just being real, and so um, you know I gotta, I gotta get back into the cusp of things. I told the saints at home, and I, and the uh, our pastoral group we're gonna have our convocation this year. But I told I told everybody I ain't hugging nobody till after Labor Day. <laughs> Amen. I'm still fist bumping. Y'all ain't saying nothing, but uh, you know God is kind of balancing me out. And uh, it's going to be all right in Jesus' name. Aren't you glad God kept you? Oh, my. Hadn't this been a journey? But God somehow has kept us and preserved us. And, and I'm just so uh, grateful for that in Jesus' name. And it does feel good to be in the house of the Lord and to feel the fellowship of God's people. I appreciate that uh, on today. And and uh, feel very special because uh, I'm here with Bishop Nelson and with uh, Bishop Merritt. And I kind of chuckled when uh, Sherman Jr. gave me the call, said uh, Bishop wanted me to come. I remember another time, some of y'all remember we used to have a fellowship and uh, went from city to city for a while, but between Baltimore and Indianapolis and Nashville. And, and uh, then we didn't do that, but then somehow, uh, we'd have those weekends where uh, we were all here together. One year, we came, and, uh, and uh, I asked uh, Lady Mary, and I said, now what meeting is this? And she just looked at me. She said, oh, she said, he just made up something because he wanted y'all to come. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it, it's special uh, when you have real connections. And uh, the connection that is between Bishop Nelson and Bishop Merritt and myself is sort of a tier generational kind of thing, but it's a very special connection. And I appreciate that connection and, and um, just feel like a homecoming, amen, on today. Now, I'm upset because they went out to eat without me. And then went to my favorite restaurant, J. Alexander, but I, I got them back because I was here before service started. And I couldn't wait till Bishop Merritt came in office. I said, you're late today. <laughs> <laughs> so I finally got even with them. I want you to go with me today just for a few moments to the uh, Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 18. And I want to really be brief. I hope 15 or 20 minutes I'll be up here just glad to be here. Uh, uh, chapter 18 of Luke, verse number 34. Somebody save me when I was sinking. Y'all remember that song? Somebody rescued my soul from the grave. Somebody hold me close to his bosom. Oh, it was Jesus, mighty to. Would y'all just help me sing that one time? Somebody save me. Somebody save me 
when I was sinking, when I was sinking, somebody rescued, somebody rescued my soul from the grave, my soul from the grave. Somebody hold me, somebody hold me close to his bosom, close to his bosom. Look at somebody and say, oh, it was Jesus. Oh, it was Jesus. Mighty to save, mighty. And they understood none of these things. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. For we are the hearers and by faith the doers on today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I read in your hearing the first section of verse 34, the A section of verse 34 of the 18th chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke. And I just would like for you to focus in on those words. If you don't hear anything else I've said, just focus in on those words that the writer of the Lucan Gospel has placed on record here in the Holy Writ. He said they understood none of these things. I probably won't holler much today Probably won't moan, but I just want to ask you to focus on these words. I've been sort of twisted and entangled with them as they are rendered here in this text. I was so moved by them, I think I, as I tried to talk about them, I probably really didn't preach them, didn't preach the text proper just so I won't be guilty of that uh, it's settled and nestled in the midst of Jesus' interactions with some of his disciples it's a post resurrection text he now has already done pretty much what his assignment was here in this world what you have here is a, is a very fatalistic atmosphere. Disciples are walking along the way. Their spirit is filled with what you might call a kind of chagrin. They're walking because they think that perhaps what they worked for didn't turn out quite like they had hoped, didn't meet up to their expectations seemed as if the man who they, from whom they expected so much change did not bring that change to pass. The man that they had set so much hope in, believing that he was in the world to deliver Israel, full deliverance at last, to lift the burdens that the Roman Empire had so egregiously placed upon their shoulders seemed as if this revolutionist wasn't a revolutionist at all he lived he talked good he died in their minds and it was over the real truth is however there was a lack of understanding it amazes me sometimes how people can be close to Jesus but not really understand Jesus and hang around him <laughs> but not really know who he is <laughs> my mind runs back to another pivotal time in scripture you remember they came to Jesus <laughs> and they said show us the father and it suffice of us and of course Jesus responded and said have I been so long with you by now you ought to know when you see me you see the father 
we have to be careful in the environs of church that, that we don't just do church to be doing church. Got to be careful that church is not just a program. Can I get a witness somewhere? Because you can get locked up in, in what I'll call just meaningless machinations. Just doing, just to be doing. Did you know you can sing the songs of Zion in your mind not be on the Lord? Huh? Just, just, just here. Paul called it sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. Because everybody, everybody in church is not really in church. Everybody in worship is not really worshiping. Can I get a witness in here? Everybody that talks about loving Jesus, they, they're not really in love with Jesus. Some of us just do it out of habit, do it out of rote. Robotic saints, we, we just respond to impulse, lights and beats and rhythms and melodies. You can dance but not be dancing in the spirit. Can I get a witness in here? You pray the right, the right tonality, a snake will move. I wish I was in the right church today. I have to be careful that, that, that what we're doing has purpose, has meaning, has authenticity, that there's some essence in what we do. Matter of fact, I just want everybody, uh, that's for real, we're not bothering our neighbors too heavy, but just let your neighbor hear you say, my worship is for real. My what I'm doing, it, it, it matters. What I'm doing, I want it to count. I, 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 I've been struggling with uh, this text. I've been struggling with the implications in, in this verse. I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm struggling with the words it said. They, they understood none of these things, and that was uh, these disciples in the way to Emmaus. And, and what, what's so amazing, if you go up in the previous verses, if you have an annotated Bible, you'll see that the words are in red. And and the red words really uh, is Jesus uh, 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 just sharing with them in a nutshell the gospel message. Yes. And, 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 and it, it amazes me uh, uh, that they understood nothing that was said. They were there and they had been with him. I don't know how long they had been his disciples. I don't have any reason not to believe they had not been with him pretty much the whole three and a half years. Heard him teach constantly, heard him preach constantly, watched him work miracle after miracle, deliverance after deliverance, but yet they didn't understand. And then I began to wonder how many people are hanging around church that really don't understand. I'm just here, but I don't know. <clears throat> I'm in the crowd, but I don't know. I've been preached to time after time, but I still don't know. Sat in countless Bible studies, but I still don't know. Oh, yeah, I even went to prayer meeting. But I still don't know. But the devil is so subtle. Can I talk for just a few moments? He's slippery. How many know the devil is slippery? The devil is a rascal, y'all. He's, he's, he's clever. He's cunning. The Bible talks about him, and it talks about his stratagems. Talks about his schemes. Paul was talking about something when he said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Amen. You, 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 you might be able to prevail easy if the devil was just flesh and blood. But the devil is a part of, of that worldly system. He's a prince of the power of the air. Can I get a witness? Amen. He's a, he's a spirit. Amen. That stands in direct opposition to the things of God. The devil is so so cunning and so clever until Peter warned the church and said be sober be vigilant huh because your adversary the devil goeth about as a roaring lion seeking whom he what he may devour you got to be careful even when you think about that I mentioned it this morning in Detroit sometime we just get caught up on lion and just uh, the imagery of the lion with his mouth open and his teeth but, but, but Peter was after more than just that he, there was more to, to that warning to be sober there was more to that warning to be vigilant amen he was, he was also referencing the furtive nature of the devil how, how lions amen lions they stalk you before they eat you 
Can I get a witness in here? <clears throat> the, 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 the hair that, that adorns their body, the fur, the, that, that camel color, it's not there by accident. It's there because uh, they are beasts of, of prey. Amen. They camouflage themselves. They blend in with the topography of wherever they are. Amen. They, they blend in in the bushes and blend in in the grass and, and the antelope or the giraffe or the zebra. Amen. They can't see them. You see, the, the, the lion, amen, it, it thrives on surprise. It thrives on, on its prey, but not being aware, not being alert. Thrives on them being sluggish and, and just throttling along and not being vigilant and not looking and not watching and not observing. And, and isn't that how the devil works? He works and preys upon our ignorance. Bible says while they slept, can I preach here today? The enemy crept in, crept in how? Unaware. Nobody was watching. Everybody was sleeping. Everybody was living in, in, in the bed of, of ease. Everybody was prospering. Everybody, amen, was doing their own thing. That's when the enemy crept in. The, a, Amos talked about it and said, Woe unto them that, that are at ease in Zion. Oh, I don't know about y'all. Lord, don't let me sleep too long. Don't let the devil fan me to sleep. So that I'm not aware of his stratagems. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm concerned today because my brothers and sisters, the church is under attack. And perhaps the greatest tragedy is that most of the church don't know it's under attack. We're deceived because of the finery of life. We're deceived because of luxury. Y'all not gonna like me today. We're deceived because, because things are, are easy and, 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 and they're better than they were in a previous generation. Uh, we, we've forgotten the fact that, 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 that we are that city that's set up on the hill. We've forgotten the fact that, that he called us out. Didn't he say that? Come out from among them, saith the Lord, and, and be ye separate. Then he said, touch not the unclean thing. And, 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 but we've forgotten, we've forgotten. Not only are we that city that's set upon a hill, we've forgotten that Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. He said, if the salt have lost its savor, it's good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. We, 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 we've forgotten that, that we're in the world but not of the world. The church should be the influencer. Can I get a witness in here? Wherever the church is, there ought to be a change somewhere. Wherever the church is, the, uh, the world ought to be impacted around them. Wherever the church is, there ought to be some rattling and some shifting and some changing. The church should be so in tune with God until it, it should be said today what was said in Bible times, these that have turned the world upside down are come here also. Oh, but Satan is so clever. Satan is so slick until sometime and when we're not careful, he reverses the influence in the science world. They call it reverse osmosis. Can I get a witness in here? Satan knows how to, to flip the script. I wish I had somebody. Amen. And sometime, sometime we're being influenced, not knowing it. We're being influenced thinking we are being the influencers. And I've watched something today, and that's why I think I'm, I'm concerned as I'm, I'm at this 100-year celebration. I thank God for this church. Can I get a witness in here? Y'all ain't happy enough about 100 years. Y'all not excited enough about a hundred years. I'm going to say it one more time. I thank God for this church. You ought to thank God. You ought to thank God because there's something that's going on in the world. There's something that's happening to the church. I'm almost through already. There's something that, that's percolating. There's something that's turbulent. There's something that ought to make us disturbed. There's something that ought to keep us awake at night. Satan is working his stratagems and it occurred to me that uh, something is happening in the church world and 
and, and we're, we're, we're majoring now in minors. We're, we're, we're caught up in stuff that, that perhaps we really shouldn't be so caught up in. And, and we're being diverted from, from what really is important. I, I, I've been looking, and I'm, I'm not a preacher bash. I'm not here to throw off on other churches. I just want to talk about what's important. There, there are things that concern me. I, I, uh, just uh, several weeks ago, I don't think I don't know if I told hardly anybody, but I was watching a a, 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 a show on a, a, a church service on YouTube, and and I watched it, and I don't know something disturbed me. The man was there preaching and I don't know who he is I'm not here to bash him but but when I look behind him amen it was his picture on the screen behind him and, and it seemed like it stayed up there the whole message and I'm I'm trying to yes, sir. understand what this, what is this all about you you you're, you're preaching and then your picture and the name of your ministry is behind you there on the wall for the duration of the message I'm, I, 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 I hope I can talk here today I, I, I'm concerned when when men shine brighter than Jesus I, I'm concerned I'm concerned when, when the church goes Hollywood I'm concerned when, when the church becomes production I'm concerned when when the church is doing everything but what it really ought to be doing. I, I know that we're supposed to, to have a presence in terms of the natural community. I'm trying to do some of those things. I know we should have programs and I know, praise God, we should have housing programs. All of that is good, but, but what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? and lose his soul. What good is it to have a house? What good is it to have a big car and still end up in hell? I, I'd rather have Jesus. I, I wish I was in. I wish I was in the right church today. Is there anybody that, that would rather have Jesus? I, it's not time yet to high five your neighbor. It's not time yet to pull down your mask and say, hey neighbor, but, but you can let your neighbor hear you say through your mask, I'd rather have Jesus, I, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather, I would rather, yeah. rather have Jesus than, than the best of clothes, than the finest of shoes. I, I'd rather have Jesus than to be famous. I, I'd rather have Jesus. Sometime, sometime we, we get twisted and, and I just felt in my spirit, it's the pressure from the world. The world is pressuring the church. That worldly ethic is slipping into the church. It's sliding into the church. And we're, we're not even aware of it. We, we, we're enamored with it. We, we, we've forgotten the, the corpus of the church, the core of the church. Uh, did I have five more minutes to preach? But we've forgotten what really matters. And, and we're, we're trying to be like everybody else. Y'all ain't hearing me. We're looking at all these other churches, and, and I, I've been guilty of some of it myself. I've been trying to modify and change because everybody else is modifying and changing, and, and there's nothing wrong with change when it's positive change. There's nothing wrong with change when it brings us closer to Jesus. But, but why do we be changing just to be changing? Why? There's something wrong, something wrong. We, we're working on something in, in Indianapolis and in Detroit right now. We're looking at our pulpit. Uh, bishops, men of God, we're looking at our pulpit. We, you know, I, I, we, we want to be fresh. We're coming out of a pandemic into endemic, and, and we want everything to be nice and look nice, and, 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 and we don't want to be antiquated. I don't want to die a whole bitter preacher. I want to, you know, I want to. I wonder, you ever seen a preacher get old and get mean? I, I fussing out everybody and fussing. That ain't how I want to go out. But, 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 but I'm wrestling with some things. The young men are pushing me to make some changes. I'm gonna do some changes. But, 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 but I gave some thought to others. Week, how you gonna change? How you gonna change? What, what you gonna do? Uh, uh, what, what is the pulpit gonna look like? Uh, uh, what kind of production are you gonna have? What kind of set? Are you gonna have and and I started thinking about it, Bishop Merritt. I, I I thought about it and I said I don't I don't just know that the pulpit ought to look like my living room. I don't just know. I, I I'm trying. 
trying, trying to get this thing together. I'm trying to get the perspective. You know, I want to be in tune with the times, but I don't want to be out of touch with Jesus. I, I want to be connected. With, I want that spirit of the sons of Issachar who who know the times and know what Israel wants to do, but but I don't want to become part of that generation who knew not God. I, 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 I don't know, is there anybody like me that, 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 that has arrived at that point in your life? I can't live without God. I, I can't make it. I, I wish, is there anybody in here that, that still needs God? I, 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 is there anybody that, that just open up your mouth and, and say, I got to have God. I, 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 I'll give up the progress before I give up God. I, I'll give up the bigger building before I give up God. I'll give up a larger membership before, before I give up God. I have prayed too long. I fasted too many times. I've suffered too many. I must have God. I, I wish I had somebody that knew. Clap your hand and give God a, a praise right now. I, I struggled with you. Maybe seated. I'm not gonna be here long. I struggled. I struggled. What 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 kind of pulpit do I want? What kind of pulpit do I want? Do I still want a pulpit or, or do do I want a, a coffee table? Do, can I get a witness in here? I, I, I'm struggling with some things. Somebody gonna have to pull me aside and explain to me some things. I, uh, uh, I, 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 somebody uh, told me about a church, and I'm not criticizing churches. I'm I'm just trying to understand. I, and they told me about the church, and they said, "Oh, I love to go to church because because uh, we can sit in the pew and drink latte. We can sit in the pew while it's <coughs> service." While the service is, is going on, amen, and, and I, I listen to that. that. Is that what I got to do to keep young people in my church? Is, is that what I got to do to keep the ministry on the move? I, I, I got to serve latte while the service is going on. Oh, help, somebody help me. You know, I can get coffee after church. I, I, can, I can go to Starbucks, and I'm a Starbucks lover. Amen. But I come to tell somebody, when it's church time, Starbucks can wait. When, when it's church time, uh, we, we, what are we doing? What are we doing? We're, we're turning the church into social clubs. We're turning the church into, into something that God never intended for the church to be. We're trying to make the church something that, that the church is not really supposed to be. I, I understand uh, we live in a political world. We got to deal with political figures, but God never intended for the church to be political. The church is supposed to stand outside of politics. So church is supposed to keep its hands clean so, so he can walk in and tell King Ahab, thus saith the Lord. There shall be no rain nor dew from heaven. Amen. But according to my word. But what do you do when the prophet is too political to say, thus saith the Lord? What? What do you do? Y'all not going to like me today. I, I'm trying to talk to you about the church. I'm trying to talk to you. Amen. That, 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 that we guard the church. I'm trying to talk to you as we celebrate 100 years that, that we work out our responsibility not just as preachers but as members of this church we we don't want to arrive at that age where we just have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof something is wrong in the church I've been looking at the churches I'm trying to see what should my pulpit look like I'm going from YouTube video to YouTube video and, and I'm looking I'm looking and, and I'm getting more disturbed and, coffee table is in the pulpit and preachers sitting there sipping on coffee and I, I never figure out how can you say hallelujah with latte juice in your mouth how, how can you how can you praise God holding a, a sip a cup of coffee when when he said enter my gates with thanksgiving come into my courts with praise how can you hold on to a cup of coffee when you think about the goodness of Jesus and, and all that is done for you, I, I look and it, it messes with me. I look and it bothers me. What's going on? What's going on? Is that what I want the church to look like? And, and I don't know if you've been observing what, what I've been observing. A, 
lot of churches today, uh, they put the cross out the church. They don't want the cross in the church. They don't sing about the cross. They don't teach about the cross. They don't preach about the cross. They don't testify about the cross. Oh, they'll tell you how to be blessed. They'll tell you how to help yourself. Y'all know, I was, can, can I preach here today? I believe in blessings like everybody else, but, but there's something wrong when the message is so lopsided. It's all about getting, 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 and never about giving. Don't you know that the core of the Bible is about giving? The golden text says, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. I'm, I'm getting ready to close right now. Whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We, we're living in this hour. We're living in this age where, 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 where we're putting a, a bridge between, uh, amen, God and his church. And the church now is the place where you come to learn the seven steps to success. The church now is the place to simply teach you, amen, how to thrive in your profession. The church now, it simply become the place, y'all don't like me today, amen, to just tell you how to get more money, how to get a big house, how to get a big car. We, we have taken the church and we have taken the gospel and we have polluted the gospel and we've turned it into a gospel of commercialism and, and self-promotion and self-advancement. And we've left Calvary out of the picture. We, we live in an age, I'm about to close, I'm about to close. Live in an age where God has been banished from his church. We live in an age where, where, we, where we have arrived at the book of Revelation. I'll leave it to the scholars. I'm going to use it like I want to today. Jesus is on the outside trying to get in the inside. You've crowded me out. You've crowded me out. You've crowded me out. You've crowded me out. You've crowded me out with your programs. You've crowded me out with man-made philosophy. You've crowded me out with humanism. You've crowded me out with selfishness and greed and pride. You've crowded me out. You said, I want my church back. I want my church back. Somebody just let your neighbor hear you say, I said, tell your neighbor, the preacher told me to tell you. God said, I want my church back. I, Oh, I wish somebody said with some conviction, said with some passion. Tell your neighbor, God said, I want my church back. I want you to stop making it about you. I want you to quit preaching about you, teaching about you. I want you to quit putting your face on Facebook all the time. Wait and Waiting for somebody to affirm you. Waiting for somebody to tell you how good you look. Let me tell you something. Calvary wasn't pretty. Calvary was ugly. Calvary was a bloody mess. Calvary. Somebody shout glory. Shout hallelujah today. We, we've done something in our church, and, and I believe the Lord let me know what was going on. You may be seated. I, I'm going to close out here in just a minute. I believe he let me know. He let me know what was going on. We, 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 we we're polluting the gospel message. We're diluting the gospel message because uh, we really don't understand what it is. We're, we're watering it down. We're petering it down. Oh, I don't want to get out here. We're pandering to our flesh. Pandering to our flesh because because we want to feel good and, and we want the warm and fuzzy and, and that's what the kind of church that this generation has. Paul talked about it. He told us in the last days, perilous times shall come. Can I get a witness in here? Talked about men being lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. He said the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. He said they're heaping to themselves teachers uh, having 
itching ears. Tell me something good. That's all they want. Tell me something good. Tickle my fancy. Talk about how great I am. Talk about my destiny. Talk about my future. Tell me when my car is coming. Tell me when my house is coming. Tell me, amen, how I can advance on the job. Oh, there's a mess. There's a wreck that's going on. And I look at these services. I look in these sanctuaries. And I believe the Lord told me. He said they're trying to inoculate themselves from me. Death, the devil is working his furtive plan. And, 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 and he's trying to, to, to lock me out of the church. They don't want any image of Calvary. I, I remember back in the day, it's out of vogue now, but, but I remember back in the day, the church I grew up in, Clinton Street, Greater Bethlehem Temple uh, in Detroit. They had the same thing at Christ Temple. And, 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 and I'm not saying we got to go back to that, but I remember on both sides of the pulpit, a little boy, amen, I grew up looking at Calvary. I grew up looking at Jesus. Can I get a witness in here? I grew up Amen. Looking at this gruesome figure hanging there on a cross. I grew up looking at this, this, this ignominious character hanging on the cross of Calvary. Nail prints in his hand. Nail prints in his feet. A crown of briars pressing down into his forehead. I looked up. Thank God at that picture. I grew up with that picture in my mind. A sword, a spear had been thrust in his side. Blood and water flowing from his side. Blood flowing from his hands. Blood flowing from his feet. Blood running down from the, the, the brow, amen, through his brows and to his face. We don't want to see that anymore. We want a sanitized church. But God said, remind my people, Calvary was a bloody mess. I died that you might live. I, oh, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. We grew up. We grew up. It wasn't pretty. We grew up. It was ugly. We grew up. Thank God. It was pitiful. And, but now we have banished that kind of imagery from our church. We we don't want it in our church anymore. You don't hear folk. I'm not trying to make myself anything or any of these preachers anything. But you don't hear us talking about Calvary too much anymore. We don't hear us talking about suffering. We don't hear us talking about pain. We don't hear us talking about disaster. We want a gospel that's sanitized, a gospel that's pretty, a gospel. Oh, can I talk to somebody? A gospel that doesn't challenge me. We want a gospel that doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. We want a gospel that is sanitized, that's pristine, that's whitewashed, that's, that's crystal clear. And then the Lord told me something else. Not only do we want it sanitized, we want it to be uh, anesthesia. We want it to have an anesthetic effect. And that means we want to be inoculated from pain. But, but I come to tell you, uh, must Jesus bear the cross alone? All the world go free. No, there's a cross for every man. Cross for you and me. Oh, I wish I could preach today. Somebody tell me, preach anyhow. I got to close, I got to close, I got to close. If any man come unto me, he must deny himself daily. Take up his cross and follow after me. I'm getting ready to close, but, but I had to stop by and tell Christ Temple Church, greater Christ Temple Church in Nashville, Tennessee, I had to stop by and tell you, we still need the cross in our church. I had to stop by and tell you, we still, amen, need the blood in our church. I wish I had somebody that would just put it out in the atmosphere and just speak it over yourself, but let your neighbor hear you say it. I still need the blood. I, I still, still need the blood. Y'all not saying it like you're convicted. You're not saying it with enough compassion. I need you to say it. Whether you've been saved 52 years like me and that other sister, or you've just been saved for five months, I need you to open up your mouth and say, I still need the blood. 
then help your neighbor. Tell him you need the blood too. Don't forget the blood. Don't forget Calvary. The blood signed my name. The blood signed my name. The blood signed my name. My name is inscribed in the Lamb's book of life. The devil can't take it out because it's been signed with the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. I wish I was in a blood church. Uh, is this a blood church today? Uh, let your neighbor hear you say another time. I still need the blood. I, I still, I need you to say it. Not because I told you to say it. I need you to say it because you know that you need it. Open your mouth and say, I still need the blood. Uh, what can wash away my sin? What can what can make me whole again? Nothing, 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 nothing but the blood of Jesus. One drop of blood bought me a million years. So was born. Each time he shed a tear, he loosed the chains that fettered you and me. He bought my soul through death at Calvary. Look somewhere and say, hey, neighbor. I still need the blood. I, I wish I was in the right church. I, you got quiet with it. Look in the other direction and say, hey, neighbor. I, I still need the blood. I, on Calvary is a hill of sorrow I, where sins demands were paid. I, and rays of hope, I, thank God for tomorrow. I, across our path for laid. I, I still see a crimson stream of blood. It flows. I wish I was in the right church. Look at your neighbor. Point up toward heaven and say it flows. It flows. It flows from Calvary. It's waves that reach the throne of God. They're sweeping over me. Can I get a witness in here? I will cling to the old rugged cross. I wish I could preach today. Would you look at your neighbor? Do I have any blood-bought saints in the house? Do I have any adherents of Calvary in the house? Do I have any soldiers of the cross in the house? Would you holler around the church? Would you reach out and clap your hand together and say, hey, neighbor, in the midst of these dark times, uh, say, hey, neighbor, uh, while the church is under attack, uh, say, hey, neighbor, uh, while the devil is trying to get me uh, to throw in the towel and turn around, uh, let me see you clap your hands uh, and say, I, I will cling uh, to the old rugged cross. Uh, Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. If I never get a car, keep me at the cross. If I never get a new house, keep me at the cross. If I never get a better job, keep me at the cross. If I never, if I never own a tailor-made suit, I'm satisfied with Jesus. I wish I was in the right church today. I wish I had somebody that would help me preach this afternoon. I wish I had somebody that would turn and tell your neighbor, I may not have everything I wanted. I may not have had every prayer request I made granted. Say, I may not live in the best of neighborhoods. Say, but one thing I do know, I got Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus. I wish I could preach. Can I preach anyhow? Can I get somebody? If you're a brother, put your hand on your back. If you're a sister, put your hand on your hip. And say, long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. 
he's the best thing that ever happened to me. He's better than whiskey, better than wine, better than smack, better than coke, better than sex. I got you. I said, I got Jesus. I know you can't shake hands, but would you look in another direction and say, you don't know, like I know, what the Lord has done for me. He's my mother and my father, and I won't take it back. He's my sister. I feel like preaching today. And my brother, and I won't take it back. He's my lawyer in the courtroom, my doctor in the sick room. I won't take it back. He's the best thing. He's the best thing. He's the best thing. I'd rather fight than switch. He's the best thing. I came today to tell Greater Christ Temple. I came today to tell everybody that will give me a hearing. Whatever you do, don't forget Calvary. Whatever you do, don't forget the blood. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin left a crimson stain. But he washed it. He washed it whiter than snow. Look where he brought me from. Look at what the blood did in my life. I need somebody to help me close this message and say, hey, neighbor, a blood donor saved my life. Somebody help me preach and say, hey, neighbor, the blood saved my life. That's why I sang that old hymn when I got on my feet. Somebody saved me when I was sinking. Somebody rescued my soul from the grave. Somebody holded me close to his bosom. It was Jesus, mighty to save. Do you remember where it brought you from? Do you remember when you was out lying in that pit? Do you remember your neighbor wasn't cut? Nobody was there to salt you. Nobody was there to suffer you. None I pity thee. I heard Ezekiel sing. I was polluted in my own blood. I was a bloody mess. Can I preach today? But I heard the Lord say, when I pass by, uh, ain't you glad he passed your way while on others thou art calling do not do not pass me by I need somebody lift your hand toward heaven and say hey Lord I can't hear nobody say hey Lord here I am while on others thou art calling do not pass me by ah, touch me
just the day you saved me. Right now, keep me, Savior, from day to day. Under. Under! Thy precious, precious blood. I didn't come today to be a party, party pooper. I didn't come to have that effect. I come to remind greater Christ temple not that you haven't already been reminded I know what kind of preacher this man is he's a gospel preacher and I don't mean no harm but we don't hear too much gospel no more and I'm afraid I'm scared we've taken suffering out to church. Can I have two more minutes? Let me tell you something. I've had to change some of my theology too. Everybody's not going to be delivered in this life. But we don't tell you that. And what we've come up with God help me today is a pampered and spoiled generation that's not ready for any struggle that's not ready for any hardship because we're telling you every day you're going to come out you ain't going to come out of some stuff if you could come out of everything we wouldn't need to go to heaven listening to me Paul had a thorn in the flesh preachers we got to quit lying telling everybody they're going to get delivered sometimes it's not God's will for you to be delivered we don't talk about his will we tell everybody they're going to have a big car and a big house you know that's a lie because as long as you've been being told it you ought to have yours by now God help me today. I'm getting in trouble. You're telling folk that, that they won't have to suffer and they won't have to die. Jesus died. Paul was martyred. When did we get better than Paul? Peter was crucified upside down. God said, I need some strong soldiers. I need somebody who has a mind to stand up and say, I will endure hardness like a good soldier. I need somebody that trusts God enough to wreck their life and still say, though he slay me. Yet, well, I trust him. Calvary must be preached. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Preachers, can I talk to you? Can I be a presider? I may not be your presider, but can I preside for a second? You shortchange the congregation when you don't preach Calvary. When you don't tell people all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Hear those old saints. Can I have two and a half more minutes? Be sanitized by worship. My 
flight is out tomorrow. All we sing is half the time is fluff and bluff songs. And I'm not a bit old mean preacher. I know some of the new songs, I like many of them. We minimize our forefathers. So arrogant, we call them ignorant. But they stood up to real tests. They didn't backslide out of church because somebody didn't like them. And they didn't join the church asking you to, to give them a resume on what the church is all about. Don't y'all say amen and then go out of here and go right back to I hear, I hear one of the old mothers, they, they, you know, they sang those, what do you call, call and response songs. We're too deep for that now. I hear one song right now. I'll journey on. Y'all remember that old song? Call and response. I'll journey on. Response. What was the response? I'll journey on. You can't sing that in the weak church. It's not deep enough. That message is pretty good for me. You need to hear the version of the song. Listen to the complicated verses. If my mama don't go, if my daddy don't go, if my sister don't go, if my brother don't go, if my wife don't go, if my husband don't go, I'll journey. Oh, I need somebody to open up their mouth and say, I'll journey on. That's how this church was built. Wasn't built on fluff and bluff. This church was, was built on strength. This is the house of the living God. Building ground of truth. We quit preaching Calvary. Let me get my books. Y'all not going to even have me back no more. No matter what they do to gates. No, what is the devil doing to the church? On one side, it was Calvary. And then on the other side, it was Jesus coming in the clouds. The old songwriter said, "'Tis the dawn of a holy morn." We don't sing that no more. We have gathered from the storm. Lord Jesus, we waited for thee. Problem is, ain't nobody waiting for him no more. In thy likeness we shall be through the long eternity. Hallelujah, he's coming for me. Nobody talks about the rapture anymore. But those old mothers and fathers whose lives never got easy. Who worked two and three jobs. My daddy worked three jobs basically all his life. But they still served the Lord. I better grab my stuff. I'm getting ready to make somebody mad. They worked three jobs. They still went to church. We got to serve you lunch before Bible class to get you to come. Bishop, pull my coattail. You're my pastor. We got to sit and plot and scheme how to get you to stay in church. And we got to put on a theatrical production every Sunday to keep you interested. Why isn't Jesus enough? Three jobs, still poor. So poor he couldn't pay attention. You'll get that on the way home. But they had it in 
their mind. If I don't get it now, I'll get it on the other side. I've said enough. God bless you.